Okay, this is continuation of 1.2. This is the extra practice. And what this is, is this is actually a question from one of the provincial exams. It was a really good question, so we decided to talk about it. So here it is here. P of X divided by X minus 2. So that is there. This is what the result is. So when you do that, you end up with an X squared minus X plus 1 plus 3. That's your remainder. And remember, we write it as X over 2. So explain why x minus 2 is not a factor of p of x. So explain why this, oops, I'm moving it around here. Explain why that is not a factor right there of the whole thing. Well, what do we end up with? Well, if you look here, did we end up with something on the top? Yeah, we did. We ended up with a remainder of 3. So we know if we had a remainder of zero, then it would have been a factor. Remember, that's the binomial remainder theorem. So because this ends up with a remainder of three right here, right, we know that that is not a factor. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, I think that was worth like one mark on the provincial. So then the next part was determine the equation. So what we got to go back. Well, what we do is we look at the original one. So it's x squared minus x plus one plus three over x minus two right there. And we have a x minus 2, right? Because that's one of the factors there. So there's the x minus 2. Well, what we have is we have the big old polynomial. It looks kind of weird because we've got a fraction in here, times by this. Well, how do you do that? You guys know how to multiply, right? Distributive property. This x and this 2 goes with everything, right? So we take the x, multiply by everything. Now, the nice part about it is if you look at the last part here, this 3 over x minus 2 times x minus 2, oh, that's kind of cool. Those will just reduce down and you'll end up with a 3. So that's where we got our 3 from there. So you uh, multiply everything out, then co collect like terms, bang, and there we go. There's our polynomial there. Yep. Yeah. So let's double check some work here. So x, or another way to do it, so that's one way. Or the other way is to go backwards and look at your coefficients there. So 1, negative 3, 3, and 1, there they are there. And we know it has a remainder of 3, so we know that row. We know this piece, and we know that this, the 2 from, right? What number do we plug in here to make it equal to 0? So we know those pieces. Well, now we can work backwards. So we had a 1. What was added to 1 to get it to 3? Well, that had to be a 2, right? And then we look at here. 2 times something has to give us 2, so this one had to be a 1. So then 3 plus something has to get us to 1, so this has to be a negative 2. Then we go backwards, right? So this down here times 2 had to be negative 2, so we know it's a negative 1. And then negative 3 plus something gives us negative 1, so that had to be a 2. And this one drops straight down, and 2 times 1 is 2. Oh, yeah, it does work out. So now what we can do is we can look at the main components here. These were the original or the other pieces with the x squared with your remainder here, right? So this would have been x squared minus x plus 1, right? x squared minus x plus 1. You can see it right there. Yeah and the remainder of three. So there's multiple ways to look at it. Both of these kind of would have worked in, in the way to set it up. Okay, so that is the extension 1.2, the extra practice.